Hey everybody, Marcus back here with a Vaughn Tips video. This week I'm going to show you how to integrate a third-party JavaScript library into a Fusion project. I'm going to use leaflet.js, which is a mapping library, but the same steps should work pretty much the same way for any other JavaScript library. So essentially what we need to do is first of all install the library, then load the JavaScript, uh, option and load some CSS, and then finally hook into some HTML element where we can initialize that. So let's create a project and see how we can do this. All right, so here I'm using the Vaughn CLI to init a new application called MapApp uh, using Vaughn Fusion and the empty template. All right, and with that created, let's CD into that and use VS Code to open it. And while it's opening, I'm also gonna start the Maven build process so we fetch all those dependencies that we need. All right, so um, let's configure our screen here first so we have an easy time to seeing everything that we need. All right, so like I said, we're gonna use leaflet.js here and if we take a look at how we can download this, first of all, we have a few different options. Uh, we could copy paste the link and script tags just to uh, load it from a CDN. But instead, what I want to do is install it locally so that it goes through the same uh, Webpack build process that everything else and gets bundled along with all the other uh, dependencies that we have. So we're going to use this. Um, I'm going to open up a console here. And Vaughn uses pnpm by default, so unless you change that to npm when downloading, uh, you should use pnpm install, and then we're going to install leaflet. All right, and that'll take just a while. Let's do it like that. All right, so um, now that we have it installed, let's go into our view here. So we have an empty view. You can see that it just displays a content placeholder here. And if we change something, it should hopefully automatically reload and we see the change here. All right, so what we want to do first is load leaflet here. So we're gonna import uh, star as leaflet from leaflet. All right, so it's still complaining that we're not using it. But the other thing that it's saying is that we should install some types for it. So we're gonna install the TypeScript types for leaflet as well, just to make it easier to work with here. So pmpm install save dev types leaflet. All right. And if we go back into the leaflet uh, documentation here, we can look at a usage example. So uh, essentially what we need to do is instantiate a uh, leaflet with map pass in either a identifier or a HTML element where we want to, to display it and then some options on where we want to show it. So that means that we need, first of all, an HTML element, a div where we can initialize this. So I'm gonna use the div here. I'll give it an ID map. And then I'm gonna override the first updated callback. So this will get run whenever the first render has occurred. That means that we have uh, this ID here available to us. So first of all, let's grab a hold of this map container here. So let's call this map container. And we can use this dot render root dot query selector. Let me uh, hide that to make it easier. And then we can just query for the map ID. And since we're using TypeScript, I'm gonna typecast this into a HTML element like this. All right, so that takes care of the first thing. And then we'll create a map using leaflet. So leaflet.map. And this will take in either a string or an HTML element, but we're, we already have the container here, so we're gonna pass in the map container and then some options. All right, so uh, the options that we're gonna give here is a center. And 
part of the center, it takes in an array with two values. So let's center this around Turku, Finland, where Vaden is from, 22.08. And then a default zoom value. So we'll pass in value of eight there. All right, so that's the first thing. And the second thing that we need is to configure the title layer and that we do on leaflet as well. So we can essentially, let's just copy this and call leaflet the title layer. And you can see that it's using OpenStreetMap here uh, by default. Uh, we don't need the foo here. It's not something that we're using. It takes in the uh, URL for the titles, and then we have options here. So an attribution, uh, just giving some credit to, to OpenStreetMap for for those, and then we add them to the map here. All right. Um, so what we need to do, let's switch here. You can see that we kind of get some stuff here, but it's looking <laughs> awfully bad here. And that's because we haven't configured the CSS. Now, if we open this up again, we can actually go into node modules and take a look at uh, what we have for the CSS. So figure out where we need to load the CSS from. So we'll scroll down to leaflet. Uh, let's see, leaflet here. And we'll see that the dist folder hit has uh, this leaflet.css. So what we can do then is open the empty view CSS file, or sorry, uh, style, style CSS file, and we'll essentially just do the same as the other imports here. So we'll import a URL, and then we're gonna use the package name, which is leaflet dist, and then leaflet.css. So that'll hopefully load the needed CSS for leaflet itself. And the other thing that we need to do is give our uh, container here, the div, a size. So we can go ahead and open up the empty view CSS file. And we'll set the height and width to 100% of both the container and the div. So we'll uh, copy this empty view uh, map. And there we go. So now we can see we have the container is full sized and it's zoomed in right where we wanted it to be. So that's essentially what you need to do. So just to recap what we did, we used NPM to install the leaflet library. We imported it and we created a div to initialize uh, leaflet into. We overrode the first updated method uh, where we're guaranteed to have access to this ID. We used the render root uh, query selector to get a hold of it. And then we used the leaflet API to initialize it. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, you should be able to use the same uh, steps to essentially integrate with any other JavaScript library out there. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for new videos, let me know those as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.